Hello and welcome to our very first episode of our show. A lot has happened in Warwick the past few months, so sit back and relax while we find out what's going on in the Valley. Hello everyone, I'm your host Dragon Costanzo, and from the hot weather to the holidays, Warwick has been very busy. We've got some great stories for you today, and later in the show, Warwick Valley Chain of Commerce Executive Director Michael Jondro will be here to talk with us. So with that, let's go to Jeff Koff, who has the latest on the celebration of women's rights. Recently, the Warwick Historical Society Board hosted a panel discussion to focus on the issue affecting women of achievement in today's society in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. 2017 marks the centennial of women's suffrage in New York State. The history of the women's suffrage movement in our state and nation spans 70 years beginning with the 1848 meeting convened by Elizabeth Cady Stanton in Seneca Falls. Most women are running we got a chance to talk with the speakers, and we asked them who their female role models were when they were growing up, and if they had any advice for the young women of today. Growing up as a young woman in Orange County, New York, there were role models out there that I saw that was helpful in that. I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt, she was much before my time, but she was a trendsetter. And Margaret Thatcher, and she ran the country of, you know, of England. She was in charge. And I remember thinking she could do that. And I wonder one day if there will be an American president. To say that when you're little and people say, I can, a woman can do a job and a woman should be able to do any job a man can do, I would like young women to know the men should say, I can do any job a woman can do. For In the Valley from WVTV, this is Jeffrey Kauf signing out. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jeff. Now let's go to reporter Connor Kelleher to recap the annual work tradition, Apple Fest. Many people across the state come to this great event held in Warwick. Apple Fest is held every year, usually in the first week of October, with crowds exceeding multiple thousand. Vendors and sellers across the area travel to Warwick to sell their items. I loved it. It was a great turnout, a lot of people, a lot of balloons, kids, dogs. It was amazing. Everyone shoulder to shoulder, so it was, it was a little crazy, but it was fun. Apple Fest, I think, was one of the strongest uh, events we've ever had. Uh, the crowd has been strong all day. But I'll tell you, the, the, the advantage of this Apple Fest is that 50 nonprofits of the community can make enough money in one day of Apple Fest that they really don't have to do a lot of fundraising the rest of the year. As always, Applefest was a huge success, and I'm sure everyone will be looking forward to it next year. We've got an interview with Mr. Michael Jondro coming right up. But before, let's go back in history to the colonial times with Ethan McGuire as he covers a historical reenactment hosted by the Warwick Historical Society. <laughs> Last Saturday, the Warwick Historical Society had a revolutionary time anniversary at the Hawthorne House. At this event, they displayed 1700s era objects, lifestyle, and skills. They do this to raise money for various Warwick events and projects. This was a very successful event that attracted lots of people. Thank you, Ethan. And for more information on the Warwick Historical Society, visit this website listed below. All right, we have to take a break, but don't go away. We've got a lot more for you in the Valley.
Welcome back, everyone. Today we have a special guest as we have the Executive Director of the Warwick Valley Chamber of Commerce, Michael Jondro. Mr. Jondro, you're the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. For the viewers at home, can you tell us a little about the Chamber of Commerce and how it helps the Warwick community? Absolutely. And by the way, thank you for having me. No problem. Today. Okay. Uh, first of all, the Chamber of Commerce is very different than what it was years ago. Basically, we see ourselves as a, a publicity firm, um, advertising, you might call it. We want to promote individual businesses, for, especially for shopping local, mm -hmm. and then we want to promote the entire area for tourism because we're so close to New York City that people can come up to uh, the Warwick area of the Valley for either a day or a weekend. And uh, so what we try to do is we have a very strong media program. Our, our, uh, our websites are getting on an average of 10,000 hits a month, wow. which is huge, mm -hmm. which I've got two ladies that are just phenomenal in the office. And you know our office is that little caboose uh, downtown on South Street. Um, so what are we doing? We're really trying to help businesses. Uh, we're, a, we're just a, a section of their advertising budget. In other words, membership in our chamber is $200 a year for a small business. $200, that's it. We give them two networking events a month where they get to meet other people and, and exchange business cards or whatever. We offer a newsletter every three months. I have a weekly radio show that they can be on. Um, we're just trying to help them get their name out and, and f have people understand who they are and what they are. We help them with their websites. Like right now, we, here we are doing video, mm -hmm. and video is huge on websites. We're trying to get people to do either a testimonial, you know, maybe a 15 or 30 second clip, mm -hmm. nothing long, um, or just a, maybe a scan of their business facility, you know, the, their shop or their store or whatever. So we see it as really important, and I'm glad the, the school is really taken off on this. So how can one get involved within the chamber? Really easy. Um, first of all, we've got almost 600 members. Wow. And a lot of people don't understand that the Warwick Valley Chamber isn't just Warwick. It goes from Goshen all the way down through uh, Florida, Warwick, Greenwood Lake, or into Vernon, New Jersey, Ringwood. We're one of the few chambers that actually stepped over a state line because as you well know, uh, Vernon has all the resorts, everything mm -hmm. from golf and skiing and water park plus 500 hotel rooms. We don't have any hotel rooms in the township of Warwick other than Greenwood Lake. The New Continental restaurant mm -hmm. is a hotel. Very, very old. A lot of movie stars were there and everything. But anyway, how do you get involved? Uh, we have an application. You just fill out the application okay. or come to one of our events uh, as a guest and uh, see what we are and give us a shot. It's, it's like I said, it's $200 a year. Um, that you can pay it in segments or cash or credit cards or, or whatever, but mm -hmm. uh, yes. So especially for you, how did you get into your position as the executive director? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, as I was talking, we were talking earlier, I'm a retired school superintendent and I was in education for about for almost 40 years. And uh, our two grown children were living in Manhattan and we were living in Sullivan County at the time and we wanted to be closer to the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife, who is an interior designer, happened to be down in the Jersey area and by error or mistake, or they got lost, I'm not sure which, came through Warwick by mistake on their way back to Sullivan County. And she came right up to, she said, Michael, I've just seen the most beautiful small village I've ever seen. We've got to check it out. So two things, it was beautiful, is beautiful, uh, has a blue ribbon school district, has a full-fledged hospital. How many small villages have that? Not many. Mm -hmm. And here we are, that was an hour closer to the city. So we said, sure, let's, let's move in. So we did. We bought a condo over in Warwick Grove. And um, geez, all of a sudden my wife was part of the chamber. She always has joined uh, in her business. And she said, you know, they're looking for a new executive director. And I'd been playing some golf and we'd traveled a little. I'd only been retired about six months, but I was bored to death. <laughs> I've always been around young people through school systems. I've always been working with people and I miss that connection. And uh, so I put, I threw my hat in. I said, okay, I'll apply for the job. And I guess it was about, I don't know, 10 or 15 people that had applied. And when they interviewed, they said, well, um, you're the only one with no experience. <laughs> you know, and I said, well, but they said the positive thing, they said, you merged three schools together and created Sullivan West Central School. And you know, and I know mergers are not the, uh, a, a, a very popular word, uh, 
And in fact, what schools are doing now is they're consolidating services. I see teams from small schools are now sharing players together, you know, or maybe they're sharing administration or whatever, so they don't have to give up their identity. But in Sullivan, the western end of Sullivan, they needed to merge. The schools were really old and they, they needed a new high school, so they did. Anyway, uh, they said, you merge, can you merge three communities together? Meaning Florida, Warwick, and Greenwood Lake. And I said, well, I can check it out. So they hired me. So a year later, I had to go back to the board and say, folks, there's no merger ever going to happen with these three communities, uh, not chamber-wise anyway. And I said, uh, the reason being, I said, they need to keep their identity. They need to promote activities within their area. Florida has Florida Fun Fest, for instance, has mm -hmm. the black dirt region right next to it, the farming. 60% uh, of all onions are grown right there in that Pine Island, Florida region. Greenwood Lake has this gorgeous, beautiful lake that, what, Derek Jeter is the only one that has a mansion there that people know, that he's the only one in New York City that knows it exi even exists. So, uh, and when the Warwick is a very historic village that's had a strong merchant guild for years, I said, these three are not going to come together, mm -hmm. but maybe we can join together and promote tourism for everybody, but keep their individual programs. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. So, now what's your favorite part of being within the chamber? I would say probably just m helping businesses to become successful. Mm -hmm. In other words, right now in the village of Warwick, you don't see any empty storefronts. Yeah. We've got a pizza shop that's been going to open for about a year and a half, but I mean, it's not empty, okay? <laughs> um, you know, to see on weekends, to see the traffic, which I know for locals, they get a little upset during apple season maybe or apple fest that it's really kind of busy, but I'll tell you, these are people that are coming, they're spending their money, and they're going home. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not moving in. It's not like the community is bulging with population, you know, and because and, uh, I don't think any of these three communities want that kind mm -hmm. of growth. They want to stay strong, but I think tourism is the best uh, venue for them, and, uh, but I like, it's just the people. We get phone calls galore. You would not believe the different phone calls we get from people that have questions about business or how they could do something better or just the community itself. When's Operation Clean Sweep going to happen, for instance? Mm -hmm. I want my street to get picked up, you know, and, yeah. and this type of stuff. So I guess it's the people connection. So I have this brochure with me. The uh, Yes. Can you just, uh, for the viewers at home, just explain like what you can find inside of it and oh, what I'd the love significance? To. <laughs> I should have brought one with me, and I'm glad you, you got it. it. No, no, that's okay. We print 45,000 of wow. those. <laughs> Um, okay, it's three-pronged, basically. That little guide is our way of promoting the businesses here locally, but also the area. So in the beginning, if you'll notice, there is a, just a, a whole calendar of events for the entire year. And by the way, whoever is listening, any organization, they don't have to be a member of our chamber. If they have events, can be listed in there for free. Mm -hmm. There's no fee on, wow. on uh, all of that. So, I mean, any... Now, a lot of uh, nonprofits are part of us, but there's a lot of nonprofits that aren't that have fundraisers. They can be in for free. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think the local people hang on to it because they want to know when's the Little League parade, when's Apple Fest, when's the tree lighting, uh, you know, when are things happening? Uh, so that's important. That's the first part. Then the second part is the uh, maps. We have maps of the township of Warwick, plus we have maps of each of the small villages. Uh, Florida, Warwick, and Greenwood Lake, and Vernon, New Jersey, separate maps. And, and the rationale of that was uh, so people could, because I'll tell you, when people come in our caboose, the first question they ask for is a map. They say, we're kind of lost. Can you help us out? So yeah, we mm -hmm. need to get a map for those people. Um, and then the second, or the third, I guess, third thing would be that the ads. Um, any business can put a, um, an ad in there for as little as I think is $175. Uh, a business card ad, just for, for example, is $315, but what you get with it, you get your ad, and we'll help you design that ad, by mm -hmm. the way, um, is you get listed in the directory, which is in the back, the business directory in the very back by category, so people can find people, but it's also will locate you on one of those maps. Where is your business? If they're looking for you, can they find you? Mm -hmm. So we think it's kind of a unique little program, uh, real brochure. And mm -hmm. it's easy to carry. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, and, and well, where it's distributed, it's at uh, Woodbury Common, 
It's at West Point, it's at Stewart Airport, it's at every hotel, whether it be Chester or Middletown or Goshen or Vernon, New Jersey. It's in any, every one of the 500 hotel rooms over there. It's on the thruway exit by uh, Slotesburg, the service area. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we really get it out. So that's why we have to print so many of them. So shifting topics a little bit. Okay. Within the high school, we have the FBLA, or known as the Future Business Leaders of America. Correct. For those students looking to start their own business, what is your advice to them? Wow, okay. Um, when we had the, the downturn of the economy back in 2007, 2008, when a lot of people lost their jobs, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of folks that were commuting to the city all of a sudden didn't have a job. And they came into my office. They weren't students, but they were people that had, that wanted, had always had a dream of maybe having their own business. I think a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a certain interest and they think, well, boy, I could, I could sell that or I could uh, open up a business. Well, it, it, the thrill of, of, of the business itself is great. You have to have that idea. You have to have something special. But along with that comes things like you've got to have an accountant that you can maybe not hire full time, but have available when you've got questions to set up your books, say for instance, mm -hmm. to tell you how when you have to pay sales tax and you've got to pay your just taxes period, or you've got to pay your employees. How do you set up your whole payroll system? I mean, there's a lot to it. You really need legal advice. You need to have at least a lawyer that you can call and say, "Hey, what about this?" Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you need to go to the government center in Goshen, which is going to be reopening here any day now. And, and you have to become what they call an LLC, or um, uh, you have to be registered with the, with the county and the state and so on. So there's a lot more to it. And just like advertising and, uh, or having your website, you have to have someone help you design your, your website. Everybody today, that's the standard procedure. Yeah. And then uh, Facebook is strong. Um, we do a lot. There's a lot of different media things, LinkedIn and, and uh you know, and just so many, so many things that, but what I always encourage people is don't try to do them all. Do one or two and do it well. Keep it fresh, keep it new, and, and that type of thing. So, but we would help. If anybody, if you know of anyone that would, is thinking about starting a business, mm -hmm. please, uh, they're welcome to just call us. We'd be glad to sit down or we can recommend people that would guide them through that whole system. There are actually businesses out there that uh, advise people on setting up business. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, there's anything you could think of there's available help in, in, uh, in doing this. Well, Mr. John Jones, the communications program, and I thank you for your time. Okay. Um, we, don't go away. Um, we've got a great uh, lineup in store for you, so stay, stay with us in the Valley. All right. Hey, thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate it. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. During the holidays, Warwick was buzzing. Decorations were everywhere, and the marvelous tree was up by the Old School Baptist Church. Along with these, the WRC Theater Company celebrated the season in their own way. And for more on this, let's go back to Jeff Koff. Very little Christmas. As the holiday season approaches, everyone is getting into the spirit of winter, including the WRC Theatre Company, a Warwick-based acting group. They recently put on their December show of Elf Jr. to the delight of all who came to see the production. Fine, how about you work at the North Pole? We caught up with some of the cast members and asked them how they got into theater and if they want to pursue a career in acting. Well, when I was in third grade, my uh, music teacher gave me a solo and I fell in love with singing after that. And then Mrs. Harrison, the director of this play, asked if I wanted to join this company. So I said yes, and I've been doing it since. Do I want to pursue a career in acting? I'd say no, but I do want to be uh, an ESPN broadcaster, which acting skills would be very useful for. Definitely. Um, that's like my biggest dream and I'm thinking about doing Broadway and film if I can. That would be really cool. 
Finally, we got to talk to the director of the production to learn more about what the WRC Theatre Company is all about. The WRC uh, Theatre Company is all about acceptance, kindness, love, and we do it through changing lives, one performance at a time. During the performances, we do not charge an admission. We only receive a free will offering uh, at the end of each performance. And it's really exciting because the kids during the rehearsal process decide how to give that back to the community. For In the Valley, this is Jeffrey Koff reporting. Thank you, Jeff. If you want more information on show dates and for getting involved with the WRC Theater Company, visit this website. All right, that's all we've got time for today. Special thanks to Michael John Joe, the Warwick Historical Society, and the WRC Theater Company. I'm Ryan DiCostanzo, and this has been In the Valley.